There we go. We are live. Sorry about the dog, but she's running riot and I'm trying to calm her. Don't get her excited. <laughs> oh no, Alexa's calling me. <laughs> we, we hope you're all doing very, very well. I will go check on Alexa because yeah. you've got the pup. Oh no, <laughs> don't leave me. I'll be back in a second. Okay, we hope you're all having a lovely Easter weekend. Let's have a little look okay. and see if we can um, scroll with one hand without the pup getting loose. Let's see who's in the house for us today. Lots of members. Hello, Ryan, Hip Flipping Mama, Andrew, Toby. Yes, very good point, Andrew. The um, clocks here went forward by one hour. So I hope that didn't mess up with what it showed you guys um, the, for the start time. But there's plenty of you here, so I'm guessing it did not. Elizabeth, nice to have you back. Sorry to hear you've not been well. Who else have we got? Daryl's in the house. Um, people watching proms. Oh, she's calming now, so that's good. And we've got a super chat from Adam. Thank you, Adam. Um, hi, Luz and Liz. Any insight into why World's Strongest Man hasn't been forthcoming with information this year? Look forward to this year's weight parties with y'all. Um, I think it's a combination of a couple of things. So uh, we, I think we mentioned this on last week's stream. The head... The guy who ran the social media, Mitch Ladner, who we've actually had on the channel before a couple of years ago, he is no longer doing that role. And I don't know that he's been replaced. I don't want to say for definite that he's not been replaced. What are we talking about? About why there's not been so much information oh, was, coming out of world. I was talking to a friend today about this. And I've not been impressed with the social media from World's Strongest Man. Well, they're just sort of returning some old stuff, which is fine, like when there's not a competition but, happening. And I, I do hope they're looking at this because... It's, it's not very engaging, is yeah, it? I want to give some positive feedback because at the moment, their social media just looks like someone that doesn't know about Strongman just randomly posting some stuff. And saying Brian Shaw is a unit or yeah. something like that. Yeah, like, it's not the most engaging. There's no yeah. insight into anything. Uh, I guess you were talking about Mitch Ladner. Yes. He used to work for them. And actually, he did a good job, to be fair. Well, I know he was a little bit polarising because some people fell out with him in the comments. and um, Yeah, he did do some weird stuff at times. <laughs> but he did but make he engaging did, content. And he sort of tried to learn about the sport. Uh, he learned a lot he about the sport. And the he sport. was very passionate about getting information out to fans as early mm. as possible. And I do feel like we've lost that this year. Yeah, even so, athletes know very little. Yeah, so yeah, it's it's, um, it's gone back a couple of years to what it was like when I was competing, and you kind of, as an athlete, way. you're finding out events late, and you know, it's um, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully they're watching and they see this and, and think, right, we need to kind of you know build up the hype to worlds because it's not that far away now, it's and really we want to get far. excited for world's strongest man. Yeah, yes. But we've got Europe's strongest man coming up, which yeah. is exciting. Yeah, so. two weeks yesterday is Europe's strongest man. Yeah, so that is exciting. Oh, God. We've got a paleontologist in the house. Elizabeth is a paleontologist. Mm, very interesting. Um, cousin Fred, thank you for the super chat. Good morning, afternoon, evening all. Hope everyone is well. Thank you, Fred. I'm really happy. Just paid off my bills from the Arnolds. <laughs> uh, detective, you should talk to T-Rex about that. He is a bone nut. There we go. <laughs> you know, Evan knows, actually, an impressive amount of information about dinosaurs. It's not just a moniker for him. He is genuinely passionate about have you had a conversation about dinosaurs no but if you watch his um instagram like stories and stuff yeah he talks yeah. i know you do yeah yeah, yeah. so there you go this Something... gets annoyed with me because i'll fall asleep watching a documentary on dinosaurs well or... guys i'm in bed at night listening to <laughs> sometimes weird stuff i get some weird it's stuff not all that. dinosaurs some of it's about the planet and our impending doom some of it's about murder <laughs> i'm interested in strongman history Serial killers, Aren't we <laughs> musicals. <all good? laughs> yeah. I've got a nice variety. I like sport. I dread to think what's going through our um, brains as we're um, drifting off. But never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, yes, there was an under 90 kilo show today. Chaos Strength having another competition this week. They're busy, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. I'm not sure who won today. I haven't had a chance. We um, went to see my mum for Easter. So happy Easter, actually, to yes. everyone. Um, it is, yeah, Easter. Um, which kind of made me think of, do you remember last week we were looking at those videos of your top favourite chocolate bars? Yeah, we were, yeah. yeah. What's everyone's favourite chocolate bar? Yeah, let's These, these top ten lists, I, I didn't agree with. Mm. Anyway, back to some strong man. <laughs> um, cousin Fred, thank you so much for gifting memberships. Thank Although, you. looking at it, there's mostly members here. <laughs> <laughs> there is a non-member, there you go. Oh, there you go, here's a non-member. 
<laughs> it's that wonderful time we celebrate how the Easter Bunny <laughs> laid all those chocolate, chocolate eggs. eggs. Yes, indeed. The Easter Bunny laid lots of chocolate eggs in Alexa's room this morning. <laughs> Although, to be fair, you asked her um, about Easter and she knew. Yes, she did know. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, I played the protagonist a little bit. I was like, so Alexa, why is it why do we celebrate Easter? Did someone lay an egg? And she was like, No, mummy, it's about the death of Jesus. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> She's funny. She takes things quite seriously, she does. doesn't she? <laughs> Puppy. Doggo. <laughs> Good to see everyone. Palmer Strongman in the house. Hello. The puppy. Dalton. She's getting so big. Like doubled in size. Yeah. Um, Law's looking a lot cuter this week. I take it they mean the puppy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Michael Scott's in the house. How you doing, buddy? Hope you're well. Not from the office. Well, you know, <laughs> we do have a running joke, but yeah. yes, so, not that Michael, <laughs> Michael Scott. Is Liz still going to compete in a strong woman competition? Yes, I'm still going to do it. I have said I would, so I will. God help me. And everyone else help me too, please. <laughs> Unbreakable Promotions is here. You um, obviously... Did a video with, um, with AD AD this week. And with Evans as well. With Evans Nana, who's doing his first World Strongest Man this year. Um, he's actually got a competition next week. He's got the SCL um, yes. Montanique. Yes. I feel like we didn't put any videos out this week, but we did. We did the Jean-Paul Sigmundson video and um, the Evans Nana one and the news one that since last week. Um, when was it announced, actually? The Rogue Invitational, uh, putting up the money for the women as yes. well and adding the women, yeah. yeah. I was surprised, though, with some of the comments that um, quite a few people were divided on whether or not they thought that was a good thing. Yeah, I, get, I, I understand from, from both points. I think as a strong man, as a, as a father of two daughters and, you know, someone oh. that wants to see the women do well, I'm really pleased to see the prize money that Rogue can put up. Uh, one thing we have to accept as a sport still is that the women don't bring as much money in as the men yet. That doesn't mean it can't get there, but it is factual at the moment that they, they don't bring as much money into the sport. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if Rogue, if Rogue are happy to put that money in, I'm not going to tell them not to. Um, you know, at the moment, I saw arguments saying that, oh, you know, the, the women shouldn't make as much as the men. Well, the women don't make as much as the men because even with the Rogue, it's only one competition, you know, to win World's Strongest Woman the prize money is is very minimal at the moment and it's because they, there isn't that money to, to put out there but if rogue are happy to put it out there then it's an amazing opportunity for them and hopefully we do see other opportunities because at the moment the rogue is the one and only big payday for the women mm. none of the women are full-time strong strength athletes at the moment um unless they have like their own business within the sport yeah, like, like some has, and, has yeah. a gym and stuff and some are coaches but there's no one that can say they're like a pro strong woman yeah, in terms of them making work. money from it yeah so i think it's a great opportunity for them and you have to remember as well the but rogue like, invitational is a bit different to other strongman exceptional what, competitions what, what i'm saying like people were saying oh the women shouldn't be paid the same as the men they're not because there's only one show for the women where yeah. they're going to get a big payday whereas the men have the arnolds Multiple the arnolds do not pay the same for the men and the women yeah. um giants Arts. live world's strongest man etc etc all these other competitions yeah. so at the moment rogue are the only show that are paying the, the equal money but also the rogue invitation as a competition is kind of like a huge investment in marketing for that's rogue, how they run it rogue fitness exactly so it's like a huge advert for they their have company. they have the money to do it and you know fair play to them i think and they want to do it, it yeah and i think it's a great opportunity for the women so hopefully it helps the the, the women's side of the sport grow mm. we also had our jean paul sigmundson that video was a good video come out a this lot week of work into that ah! one we did auntie liz goodness me <laughs> just to this time she's like asleep and then suddenly we could decide to do that. She's particularly here. bad though when we sit here. here. And I think it's because she's feeding off our energy. Like yeah, we're a bit before more calm. this, we're really calm. So she's calm. And now we're a bit more oh, animated. Oh, so she's Look how big you're getting. She's like doubled in size already. <laughs> oh, look at her. Bless her. But another very important video that came out this week. Jack PGM did a mean <laughs> video brilliant. of us. Oh my God, guys. I was so scared. I saw on, um, someone linked it on Reddit and they were like, Jack PGM, Liz and Loz meet. And I was like, no, I was so scared. <laughs> but, um, he like did I a said, very nice job. He it was, did it was very nice funny. Job. It was funny. So after the stream, obviously, make sure you go and check that out. Uh, yeah, what are you doing? Where are we? Go on. Yeah, people agreeing that. Um, go down. Good girl. 
<laughs> snarky comments. Yeah, there was a little bit of a <laughs> snark, I guess you could call it, um, which was a, it was an interesting vibe for Worlds, wasn't it? The Instagram account was a bit snarky. Oh, it was, yes, <laughs> yes. There was, oh, I do remember some of the, yeah, they got into a few arguments with people didn't yeah they? yeah but it's almost like they've lost any personality whatsoever at the moment. yeah i think i'd rather a snarky personality than no personality maybe, at some, all. maybe somewhere in the middle but yeah <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah i guess we can't have it all but i guess maybe it's because the umbrella company endeavor also in the wwe where it is a little bit more sassy yeah. do you know what i mean modern social media companies don't have to be all like prim and proper anymore they can show personality but answer this question we've here. lost personality now yeah hey Loz and Liz great to be watching live it's been ages Loz what are your five gym lifts to build basic strength um I don't think you can go wrong with movements well, compound movements you know simple simple but done effectively deadlift if you're talking strongman a deadlift a squat a overhead press type movement power clean is a great movement um i like farmer's walk or yoke some kind of moving event i think is really beneficial how many is that i don't know i, I wasn't counting but, sorry i was reading I, comments I, I, I think just you know if, if you can only pick she's a few exercises picking out. she's pulled the charger out yeah. picking exercises that are going to use your, your whole body in terms of a stabilizing way as well as building functional strength so it's so a big movements that you can use decent weight with and um move through a, a whole plane of motion. And there's no point in doing like a bicep curl or a tricep extension as your main exercises. So squatting, deadlifting, some kind of overhead press, power cleans are really good, Olympic type movements, if you can learn them and do them well. But if you're gonna do those, be taught well by someone that can teach Olympic movements. There's a lot of people teaching Olympic movements badly. And you know, I've had people come to me for coaching before that want to do Olympic lifting and they send them somewhere else because I don't think I'm a good enough coach for Olympic lifting. Mm -hmm. I, I focus on what I'm good at, which is more strongman powerlifting. Um, but yeah, they're all great movements to, to focus on. This is an interesting question here. I'm very curious to know how big the teams behind World Strongest Man, the Arnolds and Rogue are and what kind of people they are. That's, <laughs> so the, I think the simplest one is the Arnolds. That's mostly Jan Todd and Steve Slater, but with um, some other people that work with them quite consistently. Oh, sorry, let me put those out. And then obviously Rogue are the main sponsor of the Arnold, so they do work with Rogue as well. The Rogue Invitational is Rogue, but they hire the Arnold's team to have called the competition element of it. And then they've got their own media team as well. That yes, they, hire. they do, there's, yeah. There's, there's a lot of people involved in, in yeah. Rogue and World's Strongest Man. Well, World's Strongest Man is the most interesting one because they've got lots of different departments. So you've got your equipment department, which is quite established, isn't it? And there's been a lot of the same people for quite a few years. Yeah. You've got like an events department, the TV side. A lot there's, of there's it is... There's three main departments. Yeah. And... The communication between those three isn't always the best. No, it's not, which is sometimes what slows things down. And also they use like a lot of interns in the sort of IMG departments, don't they? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, so. You get a quick turnover. The, the only kind of standard, I guess, is, is the more <laughs> running of the strongman show yes. itself. Yeah. <laughs> she has gone nuts. Oh, dear. What happened to Mitch Ladner? He got another job. He got a promotion yeah. in a different part of the company. So he's still working for Endeavor. And he has asked that he can still be involved around World's Strongest Man time because he became such a massive fan of the sport. But um, it doesn't look like he's involved at the moment, just based off of the um, the Instagram. But that's not to We've say. Got some chocolate bars. Caramac is king. Do you like a Caramac? Caramac is good. Mm. Caramac is a good choice. Dairy Milk and Butlers are top tier, says Ronan. Yeah. Good yeah. choices. Aero Mint, hmm, not bad. I prefer a normal Aero. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a huge mint chocolate fan. Mm. Like, I, don't get me wrong, you know, it's chocolate, I'll eat it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if I, if, I, if I was allowed to choose, it wouldn't you be my choice. You know. No choosing. No choosing. No choosing. <laughs> if I'm being offered it, I'm not turning it down. Love a twirl. Twirls yes, are good. I do like it as well. Twirls yeah. are good. White chocolate uh, for Elizabeth Kinder Bueno and Maltesers for Laura. Oh, I love a bueno. Uh, Dan Benson won, followed by Ollie Clark. I saw that Josh Lancaster was third. Ollie's doing amazing, and Dan's awesome, to be fair. Dan is a, a beast, so that, that's a great podium. Ollie will... Clark used to be an under 105, didn't he? He used to be a heavyweight. Oh, wow. <laughs> Ollie, Ollie's lost a lot of weight. Um, yeah, Ollie's a, a great athlete, and... Um, 
yeah, all three of them. Well, congratulations to them. I'm going to look more into it later. As I said, we've been out today, but um, yeah, good to see some awesome athletes there on the podium. And good to see someone else who likes a star bar. I love a star bar, Catherine. Star bar is good. Yes. Uh, Evans Nana looked bigger in your interview. Is that an accurate observation? Is Evans bigger? I don't think he's any bigger than he was last year. Um, but um, he's looking stronger, that's for sure. He's he's looking good, training hard. There we go. Uh, got a couple of new members here. Who is this? Gareth, thank you so much. And Storage Strength, yeah. Thank you for thank becoming you members, you. guys. Part of the family. Have you seen the Liz and Lars compilation from Jack PGM? Yes, we have. And we absolutely loved it. It was great. I was <laughs> exceeded my expectations. I, I am impressed with him because I know how long it takes just to get the footage together. And he's so creative and his editing is really good as they well. They were funny. We genuinely like his videos, don't we? Yes. Your yeah. mum saw it for the first yeah, time. Yeah, we showed it to my mum and dinner. she loved it. Yeah, she liked it too. <laughs> Two weeks to Europe. Cannot wait. Yeah. Um, the comments on the rogue women's news was kind of mad to be honest yeah not as bad as it's when uh, they're actually competing though yeah. is it god the live chat is the worst i really hope they do consider getting like proper moderators for it i know people you know freedom of speech and all that mm. but not like when it's purely abusive like some of the comments yeah. are outrageous i mean I, I don't turn it on but no i have seen some of the comments and you know, we obviously get comments on our videos. With we've done a video for the women and stuff, and yeah, we try and moderate course. it as best we can. But sometimes things slip through. Mm. I think if it isn't taking money away from the men, then who cares? Yeah. So at this point, so someone was saying like the prize pool's gone down from last year, but Rogue do their They've prize. They've got a weird money. way of doing it. Yeah. Explain it. I don't know the exact <laughs> details. So they have this. Um, uh, what's it called? It's like an Iron Gate show which people sign up for and the more people that sign up for that the then that money goes into the prize pot yeah. for both the crossfit and the strongman strong woman competitions so what we're seeing right now is like and the then base there's also there. bitcoin involved as well mm. so at the moment it's at 117,000 roughly mm. um and by the time the competition comes along if more people buy into it and stuff i think last year it went up to 130 so it could well get to that kind of level again. But as it stands, it's 117,000 each for the men and for the women. And then for the CrossFit, it's 266,000, both for the men and for the women. So they pay equally for the CrossFit and the strength athletes. Yeah. Uh, Michael saying, I have to say the women's shows have been great and I've enjoyed them at least as much as I've enjoyed the men's shows. We yeah. have too. I think if you, if you just allow yourself to just watch it and enjoy it as a show, the women are brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, they are. And, and like there there are more and more fans getting into the women's side of the sport, which is great to see. Mm. <laughs> they went from telling Romark to touch grass to no content at all. Somewhere in the middle would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. Somewhere in the middle yeah, is, yeah. is a good, happy medium. Yeah. Will uh, Trey be competing before Worlds? No, um, it's going to be ready? his first comp, Worlds is going to be his first comp back. Yeah. Um, he is focus training hard you look at his training he's going he's going very well yeah he's looking Spoke great to him, uh, a few weeks back and he's feeling confident and he feels like he can get in good shape his goal he said his goal is to get to the final and i believe he can do that he's looking strong another important question what's the puppy's name her name is holly she is a little monkey she is lots what do you feel about the lack of squat for reps at world's strongest man recently two deadlift variations instead seem silly <laughs> Do you know why they do it? They they find a squat harder to judge. That's if that's the honest you know answer. There's a lot of people that can manipulate the squats that they've used at World Strongest Man. Uh, judging is a lot more lax, I guess. Some people are you know going real deep. Some people aren't so deep. So I think they avoid doing it to avoid those issues. Yeah, the deadlift is much easier. Just lift it up and put it down. Um, but I love a squat. As you guys that have followed my career, you know, I, I like squatting and I think it's a great test of strength. So I would love to see some squats back in some competitions. But I think it really comes down to it's easier to judge and it's a lazy answer, but it's probably the truth. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Um, new member here. So this is uh, Story Strength. You just joined. Long time fan of the channel. Thank you for joining us. Loved the Sigmason video. I was working on a script about him, but you set the bar too high for me to squat under. Oh, thank uh, you so much. Do not be discouraged, though. There's videos about everything. And yeah, like, like we, we, we have ideas better. for videos and then realize someone's done one. But yeah, we'll do it. We'll do our twist on it. And, um, yeah. you know, if you've got a great video, put it out there. Yeah. Never let it put you off. 
Like we're planning on a few, and like I'm sure there's going to be other people's videos that have done some of the stuff that we've got coming, but we're going to put our twist on it and um, hopefully people enjoy it. Who owns World's Strongest Man? Endeavour, um, which is a massive company. Yeah. I, I, IMG is the branch of Endeavour that own specifically World's Strongest Man. But yeah. the sa same people that own the WWE now, UFC, massive, massive company. Mm. Um, where are we? <laughs> Catherine saying, human banter is one thing to keep people engaged, but the comments cross the line sometimes, which is not necessary and a, a good vibe. Whisper gold. Kit Kat Love Chunky. Love a Chunky. Love the end of a Kit Kat Chunky. Mm. Oh, Lars, I enjoyed Mitch's video on peptides. I enjoyed this video too. I thought it was really good. Uh, good, honest insight into to what Mitch is doing. Good advice on there. Um, I've used peptides myself, particularly kind of more for recovery base. So things like TB500, BPC157. Um, there's some, some good kind of, you know, there's some good evidence to show that they, they work well in terms of recovery. Um, definitely. I kind of have to agree with like what Mitch said, and you, you kind of there's no long term studies of them, so we don't know the long term effects. But athletes don't really often care about that. They're looking for the best way to get as good as they can or to recover as quick as possible, and it, they seem to be something that is helping. And a lot of athletes are using them quite effectively. Um, but I thought it was a great video, done very very well. Done responsibly. Yeah, no, he was very responsible with it, and you know, Mitch is is a smart guy, and you know, whatever he says or I say is just our opinion. Yeah, you know, people have to make their own decision on whether they want to do something or not. Um, but I think he put it out there really, really well. Uh, he's a smart guy, Mitch is anyway, yeah. but he's um, articulate and he kind of puts across his point really, really well. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed the video. Um, I quite enjoyed a lot of his um, sort of More educational videos. Yeah, just he's done this whole series, yeah, you know, no, no Stone, Stone Unturned. Unturned yeah. And I think it's great for people to see. And he kind of rates how important it is and, you know, I think that's really important because me and Mitch have had many conversations about what's important. And, mm. you know, we could go through everything, you know, we can go through like that. I, I'm pretty sure Mitch would agree with me that like the most important things, firstly, like nutrition, nutrition, super important. Training is super important. Zoomies. <laughs> <laughs> then we're looking at like, you know, the other factors that you kind of have in like, you know, your rate where performance enhancing things become you know, useful or non-useful. And the problem is at the moment, you've got a lot of people at a very low level doing things that they really shouldn't be to just get above that low level. Mm -hmm. And you've got to get yourself to a, to a decent level and think then I might look at something like that. And that's, I think, one of the big issues with, you know, the talk of steroids in sports, peptides, all these kind of other things. There's too many people that are novices thinking the top guys do this, I should be doing this. Where well, the reality is the top guys are there before they start doing anything you know yeah and if you're down here and you're having to do all these crazy things and you're risking your life for the chance to compete in a novice competition you have to ask yourself is this, is this worth it yeah. you know <laughs> is it worth me risking my life to be down here yeah if you can't get to an extremely high level through good training good good eating and having the right genetics genetics are massively important i don't care what anyone says when it comes to many things in life genetics are important then you get all those top guys then yes they're going to push to extremes to to try and stand out and be the absolute best but it's when the people down here are doing it that it's worrying for me um, well, you, anyway i thought it was a great video <laughs> <laughs> will you guys do a watch long for world's strongest man again this year it was great fun last year yes 100 percent. would like we'd be doing that anyway if we weren't doing it with you guys we'd be doing it just the we're going to be looking so. for the results so yeah why not we'll yeah. jump on I, I i hope there's like some kind of live stream or something yeah. but um there was talk of something perhaps but so that's gone very very quiet it's gone it, well then everything's quiet though we're not getting no information i can tell you i was explicitly told that would be a live stream i was told prices i've been told <laughs> <laughs> but and that's nothing's gone, come out that's not come to fruition well no we don't know we just don't know because nothing's being said this i say a very important super chat from butthead uh what strong man is the scariest to see in a thong glenn ross <laughs> he's not current i am bibby <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't want to see any strong man in a thong. I'm going to be honest. Gav, Gav Bilton, someone said. Dimit Haas, have a team Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Most. To be fair, most of them. Any of us. Scary I don't want to see any of them in a strong thong. Strong men have big asses as well, so they'd look naked. <laughs> they would. <laughs> they would. Um, anyway, let's move let's on. Let's move on. Thank you very much for that. Thank you for the lovely movie. super chat. Very good question. I was almost accidentally scroll past you. Oh look, look who's here! It's the man himself. Here he is, Jack PGM. <laughs> very happy that you both. What's his name? Video, Jack PGM. Yes. What I was mean, it, Jack PMG? That you kept saying it. <laughs> um, hey, we really pulled three hundred and seventeen and a half kilos. That's awesome, mate. Well oh, there you go. You two should be very proud of the work you do to grow the sport. P.S. I recently pulled three seventeen point five. Who do I bribe to get a guest in <laughs> Vegas? You might struggle with that, buddy, but you you never know. You might get to go and um just go and watch it. Just go and watch yeah. it. <laughs> like I'll be honest with you, Jack. I can still pull more than three seventeen, and I don't deserve an invite. But I'm just gonna go watch it. Jack is much smaller than you. I know he's probably stronger too, but <laughs> you know we'll still just go and watch. You know we'll I sit in the back. I, I think. Sit down, chill out. We'll get a drink. We'll just sit back and Go watch do it. some slots afterwards. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. make some memes. Sod the lifting. Leave that to these monsters. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go. We'll go have a training session. That would be fun. Yes. Yes. Um, abusing the strong woman isn't freedom of speech, it's just being a dick, and being a dick has consequences. So, road need moderators. Now, I totally agree, Jake. Very well said. Yeah, when your freedom is being abusive to someone else, it's not freedom, is it? It's just there we go. Just keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, just keep scrolling, <laughs> scrolling, scrolling. <laughs> Loz is a much slower reader than me, so we'll be like. Duh. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it to you. That's okay. You thank go. you. We're doing most of the good job, don't we? We're a team. Um, Max, thank you for the super chat. Hi, Loz. I'm playing the game Elden Ring, and you honestly look like a boss in the game called Oh, Hora Lu? Hora Lu? <laughs> Warrior. Do a live Google for a laugh. Hold on. Oh, God, my phone. There we go. Are you looking it up? Yeah, yeah, I'm on it. Don't worry. I think I'd make a good sort of. You actually Boss. had an audition, didn't did. you? For what was it? It was they had to be an orc. <laughs> an, orc. an orc in a Lord of the Rings game. And I actually got down to the last two. Yeah, but they went and with the experience. This was for like for a job for like 40 grand. Yeah. I got down to the last two, and unfortunately, this guy that just had more acting experience got the, the position. But that would have been fun. But it would have been tough because I would have had to have like prosthetics all over me for a lot of the scenes and stuff. And that could be pretty uncomfortable. But for 40 grand, you'd do it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Maybe I don't know if we're going to be able to see. It's, is she um... eating the table? I don't. Oh, she is eating the table. Hold on. I'm going to move the dog. <laughs> I'm going to see I can if just I see can this gnawing on the table. Probably people can hear it. down, yeah. Back home. Do we know World's Strongest Man events yet? They've not been made public yet, Paris, and this is what we mean. It's it's so close now. It's yeah. literally just a few weeks away. Come here, you. My goodness. My goodness. Oh, here's some Andy fun. asks, <laughs> are compound lifts the best training for strong man? I've never tried any events. Want a good level of strength before I try. If you get strong in the compound movements, or a number of compound movements, you are going to progress much, much quicker when you actually get to strong man. Like one of my philosophies with, tra with training is get strong. Uh, one of my clients just hit a PB on the um, monster dumbbell and he's not touched the dumbbell for over a year, but we've been focusing hard on his pressing, on his push pressing, um, you know, really getting his overhead strong. Suddenly he goes back to the dumbbell and he hits a PB, first session back training on it. You do not need to train events all the time. Yes, you'll get to a point where you need to develop technique and learn how to do them, become skillful on them. But if you get strong, it's much easier then to get really, really good at the events later. Don't feel that you've got to be doing events all the time because it's just not necessary. Oh, I'm giving her some soft toys. Uh, she'll be happy. Goodness me. Will she? Will she loves it? Probably not. There you go. Just trying to be positive. <laughs> Think positive. Are you going to do any more arm wrestling content? Oh, God. If people want arm wrestling content, I'm up for it. It's Auntie Liz that kind of puts the no-no on it. But it's a strongman yeah. channel. I mean, we've got Levin versus um, 
is it Levin against Devon coming up, Levin and Devon, um, which is, <laughs> I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I to be think, fair, I'll watch that. Watch I that. will watch it. Yeah, yeah. it's good. I, I love the arm wrestling stuff. So I'm watching arm wrestling probably more than I watch Strongman right now. Yeah. If I'm honest. There you go. Question from Cybernetics Strength. Hello, Stephen. Um, how exactly do athletes cheat the style of squat while strongest man use? Don't they squat down to the pads that set their individual height? Yes. And some of them, when they get measured up for those heights, will wear different shoes than they will for what they're going to squat on. They're, and then Scandal. on the machine, they'll change their foot position. So some might put their feet further forward. And then when they squat, mm. they'll have their feet further back. Or they can manipulate things if you're smart. Um, so... The, the referees do try and look out for it. They'll, they'll say, like, make sure you bring whatever you're going to wear for the competition, for instance. But these guys are smart, and they do manage to manipulate things sometimes. Mm. Being the best isn't always about being the strongest. Being being strong is never a weakness, but figuring out the best way to do things is um, helpful as well. Yeah. Oh. Holly, come. Come. I tried to protect the table with my toe, and it got bit. <laughs> What your toe did? Yeah, I don't know if you heard this quiet. Oh. I, I totally agree with this comment here. People need to stay natty longer. Too many novices on the source. I have had novices approach me for coaching, and they've told me what they use, and I'm like, you should really not use that much. Yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't be using anything at all, but at least consider using less. It's it makes me sad if I'm honest when I see what some people do to be at such a low level, and that might sound harsh, but it should be because there is always a risk to doing these things, you know, and the, the top guys are freaks. I made the final of Britain's Strongest Man completely no, natural. World's Strongest Man. World's Strongest Man, no. No, I, no. World's no. Strongest Man, I did four weeks of Anavar, 40 milligrams of Anavar a day for four weeks. That was my first ever cycle. Okay. But Britain's Strongest Man final, I competed in 100% on my children's life naturally. Now, not everyone can say that, but I was a freak of nature. And there are other freaks of nature out there as well that I know personally that have never done anything. Yeah. And there's guys that take a lot. You know, there's, there's, there's everything in between. But if you are risking your life for this sport, which you will be if you decide to do anything, you know, and if you are going to look at going down that route, make sure you be sensible. Get your bloods done. Make sure you talk to someone sensible, not just some guy in the gym that's trying to sell you yeah. stuff. <laughs> and, you know... Start with something very, very mild and basic. Don't be just chucking a load of stuff that you don't know what how it's going to react to your body into into you. Mm -hmm. You know, be smart with this stuff. Get as strong as you can naturally first. If you can get to a good level naturally, then you might do well at this sport, and then you can look at those other things. But if you're not at a good level, don't be crazy. <laughs> you know, you can still get really good at strongman just by eating really well, being technical on the events, training hard. And having fun with it and there's nothing wrong with just doing strongman for fun so remember that if you do want to be a pro and you get to that level then then great but for god's sakes don't kill yourself for it because it's not worth it yeah dear me the absolute chaos in the background we are sorry guys yeah we've become very unprofessional yeah <laughs> we hope as she gets older everything will calm down a bit um dalton thank you for the super chat listen to evan talk about you being more of a father figure does that mean the name should change to daddy lars no no only it should call me that to, oh it starts <laughs> to get a bit maybe your children should call you that it yeah. starts to get a bit creepy well without the lars <laughs> 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 You, look, you don't need you, you can just call me Lars as well. Like you don't have to call me daddy, you don't have to call me uncle. Lars is fine. <laughs> yeah, wanker, whatever. Lawrence. <laughs> I respond to most things. Yeah. Oh, we just look kite in a thong. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Grizzly. Mm. Hey, Joe Oliver's on. I was just talking about you, my man. Oh, there you go. Hopefully you're saying something oh, nice. Joe, Joe is the guy I was talking about who just hit a PB on his dumbbell. Oh, there you go. And we haven't done dumbbell for ages. We've just been focusing on him, getting him stronger. And he's looking phenomenal this year. I'm really excited seeing how Joe does. If you don't follow Joe already, go and give him a follow because he's going to be big in the world of strongman. Cleve Dean in a thong would be the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> hey, one person's nightmare is another person's dream. This is true. Isn't there's, there's, like, there's always someone for different out folks. there. Yeah. <laughs> For everyone, <laughs> we've seen Martins in one. We've seen Martins out of one as well. There was an Instagram story not that long ago of his bare, his butt, bare butt on the side yeah. of a mountain. 
to be fair, I did a competition <laughs> in um, Ukraine and we had to do sumo wrestling. So I saw a lot of strong men in like the sumo type pants. Thing. Yeah. I don't know what it's called. Gi? No, the gi is the um, judo, isn't it? I don't know. Someone will tell me. I don't know what they're called. No. What's, what's it called? The nappy, the sumo wrestlers wear? <laughs> the nappy. <laughs> Oh, it's dear. almost thongish, yes. Happy Easter, Thor's Hammer. Happy Easter. Yes. Um, where are we? Oh, about Zilikowski making them public. The, yeah, he did. Who Zilikowski did? Yeah, it? the events. Oh, good for him. Yeah, good for him. <laughs> but there has been a change, actually. One event has changed. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> And I think that may be part of the reason there's been a delay in announcing. The, the, the One thing, they, the events, they won't announce until things are confirmed. No, and, and the problem with the events, it's not necessarily a problem, but a factor with the events is that sponsors get a big say in it um, because, you know, you look, we've had like the Kanak deadlift and the rain um, uh, power stairs and that kind of thing. So it's all branded and, and sponsory. So they do, they are part of that planning process. So... There's a few more elements to it, but I mean, you'd expect to know yeah. now, wouldn't you? Still, I'm not making excuses for them. Liz, you're smoking hot. Oh, thanks. I am feeling warm today. <laughs> it's, it's the puppy. <laughs> What's that dog doing? What isn't she doing? She's absolutely crazy. Hey, there you She's go. Crazy. It's me. I'm, I'm dumbbell. The dumbbell guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's the dumbbell. <laughs> You just train him on dumbbell. <laughs> we don't do any dumbbell. He just did dumbbell for the first time. Oh. We hit 120. Oh, wow. We did, we, he did 200 kilo push press recently. Wow. The kid is damn strong. There you go. And he's only 21. He's a beast. I'm with Liz. No arm wrestling. No arm wrestling. <laughs> no arm content, wrestling. Please. I'm with Liz. Oh, no there's... arm wrestling. Thank you, guys. Does anyone arm want wrestling. arm wrestling? Arm wrestling, yes, in small doses. Small yeah. doses is all we'd get. We're not an arm wrestling channel. But I do like arm wrestling. Yes. I like the variety in sports um, strength content. Mm. Here's a question. True or false? If Hathor had worn a squat suit at World's Strongest Man 2014, he'd have won the title. Can't say. Because would he have squatted more? I know he probably would have. <laughs> My goodness. My goodness. You are ruining our life. <laughs> but, um, you know, the likelihood is he would have got a, a few more reps in a suit. But he didn't. And we can't change it. It seems the Arnolds did a good job with measuring the depths of the squats. Yeah, they did. They did a good job. But it went on forever. Um, the squat took a long, long time. Uh, and I think that's one of the problems as well. It wasn't visually great. No, yeah, and in person it's not visually great because deadlift is just you and the bar, whereas when they're squatting, they have people around, etc. There's the frame, that, that whatever the frame they're squatting in, um, sometimes it just doesn't look as visually good as, say, a deadlift, which is just you and the bar. Andy Hayward, Liz is looking hotter while Loz looks like shit. Thank you very much, Andy. Oh, Andy. I look like shit. No, you I, don't. I do look a bit rough right no. now. It's fine. It's fine. I can take it. No. This, see, this right. is what I'm talking about. <laughs> These it's okay. Abusive comments. <laughs> it's okay. You're with me, not Andy. If you run off with him, then maybe I'll be upset. But, you know, I'm not going to get upset about it. Oh. Kiss me. <laughs> now it's getting creepy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop being weird. EastEnders is doing a storyline about steroid juice. Oh, Christ. I don't want to watch that. No. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's a lot of this... terrible, terrible propaganda. miss. Yeah, there's a lot of propaganda when it comes to, to things like that. Yeah. Ah. No doubt it's ruining that character's Ooh. life. And yeah, I only saw some on his barbecue. Wow. Me too, big cow. Me too. <laughs> Hedgehog, thank you for gifting a membership. Uh... Was, what was that under your... Oh, sorry. Yeah. This king only has... <laughs> Holly, come. Come. Come here. Is that... Any idea if there'll be an expo at Rogue Aberdeen? Um, they have like... Um, they have like a village. Like a, the they Rogue do. Village. Yeah. So there are um, stalls and stores and stuff like that. No, nothing... <laughs> My goodness, <laughs> nothing on the scale of uh, the Arnolds. 
Right, she settled under my feet. That's fine. Don't uh, know because it comes through the it comes oh through the my mic. Goodness, so stop it. <laughs> right. Oh, I'm gonna have to hold her, yeah. or you can hold her. I, oh. I just don't let her gnaw because it is annoying. Does anyone want a golden retriever puppy just for Sunday evenings? <laughs> we need a, <laughs> a puppy sitter. <laughs> there we oh. go. Here we've got a natural truck driver. But to be honest, I'm on a very heavy dose of coffee most days. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> just don't fall asleep while you're driving. Yes. Jiminy Crickets is a legend, by the way. Someone that's getting stronger as well. Mm, yes. He's doing well. Right, you're in charge of comments or the dog. I can't do both. <laughs> Brian Shaw would be the scariest, someone said, regarding the uh, thong. <laughs> Let's say it. They would all look pretty scary. <laughs> none of us, none, none of them would look good. <laughs> that's quite scary. I competed against a 14 year old who was on the really hard stuff. It was a novice class local comp. comp yeah, that, 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 that just makes that's me sad, ridiculous. if I'm honest. That's. That, an, that makes me sad. An adult, that should be considered. I, I, I actually think novices should have to be natural. Like, it just it seems silly for a novice comp. Sure, Holly isn't a beaver. We're going to get might her be. DNA might be. tested. 50% golden retriever, 50% beaver. Why won't they allow Kiriakos Grizzly in any strongman? Because <laughs> he would just beat, beat everyone so easily. Yeah. That's the, the, the problem. And we'd all um, leave our husbands. And if, if you are genuinely being serious, then he is allowed to compete. He just doesn't do strongman. Yeah. He's never but, done strongman. No. Has he, he, or has he? No, like, he did Olympic weightlifting. Uh, got okay. an injury that caused him to no longer be able to Olympic lifts, but he loves training and he developed his own sort of methods of training. And the guy's a beast. He's genuinely very, very strong, but he's never shown any interest in doing strongman. The puppy adds a family vibe to the stream. Oh, you are, yeah, we're, 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 hopefully. Fine. It is what it is. As like, long as you guys. She's just a baby. She's only 11 weeks old. Yeah, she's, she's just a baby. It's fine. I, I think <laughs> when your life is already pretty chaotic, Having a puppy, nah. it just you just roll with it's the punches. You learn to, don't it's you? It's not like we were good. all organised before this. Yeah. Uh, Brandon says, any suggestions for someone that hasn't progressed much in the last three years? There could be so many reasons why you haven't progressed much in the last three years. It could be anything from poor training, uh, oh. food and nutrition, oh, baby. you know, injuries. That there's so many things that could be holding you back. And without knowing more about you, I really can't say. Um, but if you're doing the same thing and you're not generating any results from that, then it's probably time to try something different. Oh, goodness me. Um, it's okay. Uh, I saw Joe Oliver in World's Strongest Fan. Strong as hell. You'll have great clients. You have great clients. Thank you very much. I do have some awesome clients. A go. number of them are in the stream right now. Yeah. Yeah. This, this man here is doing amazing. Lots of nice comments about you. Here we go. Lars, you look great. I totally would. There you go. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting all the men tell me I look good. That's fine. <laughs> Lars is a stud, says Dalton. Hey, Dalton. Sarah is outraged. Ah, oh, look, here we go. Thank you very much. Lauren looks very handsome for a strong man. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Jake doesn't think it. Ah, very kind of you. There you go. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> this is like a carry on film. I love How it. has Jack Osborne been? Haven't seen much of him in a minute. Jack is competing uh, at England's Strongest Man qualifier. That's his next competition, which will lead to England's Strongest Man and. I very much expect Jack and Joe Oliver to both qualify from that competition. They're both looking very, very good. Mm. Let's hope the event that was changed wasn't yoke. It was not yoke. It was. It would have been a new piece of equipment. We're now going for something more tried and tested in, instead. If they haven't announced the events by next week, I'm going to tell people what the events are. <laughs> um, what's in the heats and what's in the final? I don't know about that. I but, do. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, Liz does. So Liz is going to tell you people. You should know. Oh, actually, I know. I know what the events yeah. are. Like, the, I know the events the athletes have to train. And 
what they've been told has very few specifics. So like yeah. they've been told a deadlift, mm. a such and such. You know, there's no weights that have been told to the athletes, no distances, etc. Yeah. You know they'll have, you know they'll be out of stuff. It's so, I mean, a word. You can guess pretty much what the events are by looking at the last few strongman competitions, but there'll be a, obviously a couple of changes, but things never change that much. Mm. Anyway, thank you for the love, people. I do appreciate it. I do feel I'm looking a bit rough, but that's fine. I'm, I've got a new training goal. We're going on holiday in August, and I want to look the best I've looked for that. I'm starting to eat much better now. I'm training hard with some really great guys in the gym. And by the summer, I'm going to look the best that I've looked in a long time. Yes, you are. Whether that's going to be good enough to please what's his face? Probably not, but I'm going to be okay with that. <laughs> well, I like the way you look. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> How's your training coming along, Auntie Liz? Oh, badly. I'm, I won't. I won't lie. It's coming along very badly. Um, You're a busy time woman, aren't you? I am. I am busy. Busy it's, woman. Yeah, but I'll get there. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I've still got a lot of time. The weights are manageable. Um, I think, I'm not worried. I think what people can kind of take from from you and me these days is that we're just normal people. Like I've been really good just on my diet and do for our best. <laughs> two weeks. I was super good on my diet, and then this weekend it's just gone to shit <laughs> it's absolutely so <laughs> gone to i was two weeks not a single yeah. meal off plan no not a single meal no. and then you bought me an easter egg and that was that i was like i'm gonna I could not buy easter you an easter egg though you'd be so sad i would you would <laughs> you would be really sad <laughs> but then like i have an easter egg and i'm just like i'm just gonna eat everything this weekend <laughs> but from Your tomorrow i will be back on not that meal mum made today it was really good yeah yeah it's nice lovely to have a nice roast lamb meal, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. And the baked cheese. We just, cake you know, we all fuck up. We all make mistakes. We all got to keep trying. Yeah. You know, you get back on the wagon and keep working. And from Monday, I'm going to be super good again. And yeah, probably I'll fuck up again, yeah. but I'll keep trying. I calmed her down. Look, hide that comment. Which one? The one that's highlighted. Okay. Literally, click on the comment that's currently highlighted. <laughs> there she is. Look, <laughs> nice and calm. And not gnawing anything. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I spoke too soon. <laughs> She's calm. We just be calm talking. Kevin wants to pet the dog. Holly's in high spirits so tonight. Everyone wants to pet the dog. She's just started going out on walks, and we just can't get anywhere because everyone's stopping us. <laughs> um, yeah, she's a cute. She uh, she made she made very good friends with this black lab, didn't she? Yeah, she was bouncing all over for him. I was like, no, no. <laughs> Rain it in. <laughs> no. Oh, come on, Lozzy. Um You're in charge. I know. It's just a lot of similar things. Either people wanting to see the puppy, um, people talking about roids, <laughs> um, and how's your training? Okay. Uh, um, yeah, click. There you go. Big T, thank you for the super chat. Uncle Loz, what order would you do the events for Europe's online qualifier? Max Dunbar, um, what's that? Five, Five rep max, max axle deadlift. deadlift and 140 kilo bag to shoulder max rep. You, you have to understand, you, you can do them any day you want. So you, you don't have to do them all on one day. Um, you can set up your training however you want. I think one of the problems with the online qualifiers is you get – Slightly lower level athletes, which will, that will push themselves to the absolute extreme to try and qualify. And then some of the better guys will wait till the very end and just kind of do enough to, to qualify, Sweet. depending on how many you know, spots are available. So um, what I tend to do with, with people I train is like a week or so out, we'll kind of go for a, what they should be doing is like a safe single or a safe attempt to, to get some numbers in. Because if you kind of do have to push and you leave it to the very end and you fail, then you're not going to have anything in. And, you know, all you have to do is qualify. You don't. It's not like a competition that you, you go in there to win. All you've got to do is qualify. So we're looking at, for, for, for more established athletes that are, are very good, we'll probably play it a much safer, look at what kind of numbers uh, people have put up, and then just do enough to qualify. Some other people will kind of have to push the limit and we'll probably go for like a safer attempt two weeks out and then really push like a, a hard attempt as we get closer to see if they can get a chance. The reality is for some people, they're going to struggle because the European qualifiers, I believe I might be wrong with this. And if I am correct me, but I think only 10 athletes qualify for each class. Um, 
Whereas the England's qualifier that was online recently, 36 athletes qualified from. Mm. So much easier to qualify for that. Like Jack, for instance, did his farmers. He's like, I want to redo it again because it wasn't as good as I want it to be. It was like, Jack, it's enough to qualify. It's Relax. Fine, yeah. Um, so sometimes you can af- you don't want to be doing so many online qualifiers that it takes away from competitions. And like Alex, for instance, Alex Lungu, who some of you guys will know that I train, I've told him not to do the European online qualifier because I think it's a waste and a distraction from what he's already training for. Mm -hmm. So for some athletes, you know, we are focusing on it. For some athletes, we'll just put some numbers up for fun and see where we kind of stand. For for other athletes, it's just not worth looking at right now. They need to go away and get better and and work on other competitions. But in terms of what you do and what order, it doesn't matter because you don't have to do it all in one day. There you go. It's a good question from Davies. You were so intense as a strong man, but look so calm out of it. How did you get yourself in and out of that mental space? Oh, he's got his prop. How this? He's not joking either. I used to beat myself around the head with this. <laughs> it used to do the job. Totally normal. I used to kind of <laughs> smack myself in the head this with my stick. This is why people talk about roid rage. <laughs> the thing is... Have I ever been an aggressive person no. outside a competition? No, no, no. Not it's, even in competition. Not even in competition. If, like, if you saw me 20 minutes before I was about to do an event, I'd be joking, taking the piss out of the other athletes, mm. banter. And then five minutes before, i get myself focused, start pacing around, and I'd be <laughs> getting myself into the zone. And what I'm trying to do at that moment is just recreate that fight or flight sensation. Um, Cause when I kind of get the, the hairs on my, the back of my hand kind of like sticking up and you can get that tingly feeling, I tend to find I'm a lot more powerful. And I'll be honest, I find it hard to do that these days. When I was younger, it was just so much easier. Even when I tried to compete last year, I used to struggle, you know, to, to motivate myself like I did when I was younger. And I think you find that as you get older as an athlete, I think Martins is struggling with that right now i don't think he can kind of push and motivate himself as much as he could when he was younger and on this on his way up it does become harder yeah this is the stick i told some of my training partners are going to bring the stick to beat them so alex and jack and anyone else that's coming down to the gym tomorrow i'm bringing the stick oh sounds very kinky oh dear i will not be going tomorrow (laughs) But yeah, I was good at switching myself, you know, getting myself focused. And actually, I was very good at bringing myself down and calming down afterwards as well. Yeah. Um, thank you, Heidi, for the super chat. Just reminding people to like the video. Please. Thank do. you, Heidi. Hope you're well. Nice to Merry, see you. Merry Easter. Merry Easter. <laughs> Happy Easter. I love it. Dalton, thank you for the super chat. Thoughts on Rising Bar versus Choose Your Three Weights for a Max. Personally, I think Rising Bar is more entertaining, but Three Weights is better for the athlete. I think Rising Bar is probably better um, in terms of really seeing what we can get out of people. I think picking your weights, uh, Three Weights, is more strategic. Yeah. I think, you know, you'll see some people probably push too high. Some people will be a bit more technical uh, or tactical, sorry. Um, I like both elements, but if I'm, as an athlete, I and I wanted to get a PB or something like that, it was just nice to kind of push and see what you can do. Yeah. I like Rising Bar, but like at the Deadlift World Championships, I'd like to see a lot more weight jumps. Sure. Like I've been to competitions where it was way too many. I remember the women's rising bar hammer tire deadlift. It got really exciting towards, towards the, the end. end, but it did go on like it, it, same it with the throw. Much. Same with the throw at the Arnold's. Yeah, you know that the early throws become very boring. Well, I think it's just hard to judge with the women because we don't have that history. We know what's good for the men. No, but even like when, when like everyone's throwing it over, it is a bit boring. Yeah. As w- when you get to like more extreme Knock heights, and there's only like level. one or two left, or yeah. two or three left, for instance, it does become you know more impressive yeah. um so and i think for in terms of splitting people from points i think selecting three weights is better as well mm. but both both have their place i guess there you go someone else got their first comp in eight weeks finding it tough but at the same time can't wait to keep the faith list yeah it'll be fine what's the worst that could happen <laughs> Um, top three at Europe's. We'll probably do a bit of a Europe's prediction maybe Absolutely. next week on our news We've video. We've got three former champions in that lineup and yeah, a whole host have. of other great athletes. It's yeah. a great lineup, Europe. So we will be, um, you know, we, we'll be doing a video on that. But I, I think Luke Stolten is looking good for it. it. They're very good events for Luke. <laughs> Lost should be a hand model. He has the fingernails of a Greek god. You know, what, the amount of times in videos, not so much recently, but 
in the past few years. People ask if your fingernails were painted white, but they're not, are they? You're just very tanned hands, but not tanned nail beds, I guess. Mm, there we go. Very intriguing, the stick. <laughs> it should be in a strongman museum. It should. <laughs> we'll uh, donate it to the, the Stark Centre. So, Jan, trust me, you're going to want this. <laughs> what belongs in the museum, the stick or laws? <laughs> Have you ever been asked for the stick? <laughs> Have you never asked for the stick? I've never asked for the stick. No. <laughs> no. The only time I touch that thing is to roll his back with it. <laughs> oh. What's this one? This one? Yep. Um, oh, question about training frequency. I know you recommend three to four days per week, but if you're time poor, is it okay to train six days a week if your workouts are only 20 to 40 Yeah, minutes? absolutely. You know, you've got to work training around your schedule. And for for most people, like four days a week works really well, but there's athletes that will train every single day. I've, I've had athletes that train twice a day. Obviously, the more often that you train, then you can't do as much in those sessions. But um you can structure training and people can progress from training in many, many different ways. There is not a one way fits all. And there's, there's pros and cons to a lot of different methods. So, you know, don't be afraid to try things um, and work around your lifestyle. If, if you can only fit 20 to 40 minutes in a day, then it doesn't mean you can't succeed and progress. We need to see you in leggings, Lawrence. People have seen me in leggings before, particularly on many deadlifts. It's not a sight that many people really need to see. I mean, you've seen it. Is, it, is it a nice sight? Like, yeah, I think you look great in leggings. There we go. There yeah. we go. You've seen me in leggings. Well, people yeah. have seen me in leggings. <laughs> um, have I ever fasted? No. No. <laughs> uh, have I ever? No, I've not, actually. Um, some people kind of use it as a, as a good method sort of clear their system obviously it's a religious reason as well but it's just not something that i've ever decided i needed to do oh my god i thought it was nail polish all these years there you go there you See, go we're uh, myth busting here i today. have had my nails painted before. Toe nails well, i've had my hands painted as well by alexa yeah. but yeah i've seen hicksie has been getting his, his nails painted by his it. daughter that's what happens when you have young daughters though yes but, um <laughs> i let alexa paint my nails and then I forgot about it, and I was at the gym, and like she'd done a really bad job of painting them as well. Mm. <laughs> and then like, I was at the gym <laughs> deadlifting. I had like a hole in my sock, so like my toes sticking out, my hands are painted. No. <laughs> it's getting some funny looks, but no one ever says anything. Well, some, no, sometimes most no, people do, but something. yeah. Right. Um, have thing. you talked about the new rope rule yet of finishing as long as it's off the floor? So for yeah, yeah. those that aren't sure, like if, as say they're doing a log, as long as the log is off the floor, by the time the whistle goes, sure. they can complete the lift. Yeah. Um, hate the rule, should only be able to finish if the press is already in the air. First off, is this a new rule? I think it's been a rule for the Arnolds for a long time. Yeah. Um, but, but no one ever talked about it. No, until, until Mitch, Mitch decided to, yeah. Because most athletes don't always read the rules. Do you know what? The Arnolds rules, they're so detailed, which is great for people that actually like to sit there and read everything, but we know that mm. they won't all read it. Yeah. They're very, very detailed rules that go into everything about everything. Yeah. So, yeah, it's but, um, not new. I mean, it's an interesting rule. I, I don't have an issue with it. I actually I think... really like it because I like that they don't have to rush that last lift. I think yeah. it's safer for the athlete, and it, it just allows us to see the best like get yeah. the best out of themselves. Yeah, I think, you know, all the athletes have the option to do it. Um, but it's weird. Like, I've seen so many variations of, of events, sometimes where there's only 45 seconds to do something, other times where there's three-minute time limits. Yeah. So there's always going to be changes. I think there's something as an athlete, it's always important to be clear on the rules of, of the contest that you're in. And unfortunately, because we don't have a governing body or a set of rules that is across every event, every competition is slightly different. So as an athlete, you've got to really make it your responsibility to understand what is expected from you. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't like a lot of powerlifting rules that say you've got to have matching socks that, or, you know, you've got to have deadlift socks or you can't have the, the, the kind of hoop of your wrist strap over your thumb. You Oddly know, specific rules you know, in powerlifting. Yeah, yeah. If you're wearing the wrong t-shirt or something, you can fail a lift. So mm -hmm. I don't think a rule like having the weight off the floor. Yeah. Is or the such ones a bad that rule. force you to buy certain things. Yeah. You can wear a log top, but it has to be from our sponsored brand, etc. Yeah. yeah, I think those well, kind of suck. 
Come away from there, Billy. Ah, come. Good girl. Could y'all make a video covering the lightest men to ever compete at World Sugar Span, or maybe one that covers the most challenging World Sugar Span we've finals? We've done the shortest, haven't we? We've done the shortest. We've not done. And um, doing the heaviest has been on our list for a really long time. The the, the frustrating thing is it's really hard to get accurate weights, especially for guys who competed Cheers. many years ago. Oh, my goodness. How done. <laughs> no, we can't both leave the stream and come back. I'm holding the wires. So. Oh, God. Yeah. She's got hold of the light. <laughs> there, we go. there we go. Yeah. No drama there. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's just hard to get, like, you know, when we do things, we want it to be right, don't we? To get accurate information yes. about people's weights. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Lightest, lightest, world's strongest man winner. Who do you think it is off the top of your head? I'd probably say Yuko Ahala. Yeah, Yuko Ahala. I think Yuko was sort of um, around 120 kilos. Yeah. Marius wasn't huge. Marius was sort of between 120 and 130. Yeah, Alexi, when he won, he was around 132. Yeah, something like that. Um, I mean, even Magnus Ver probably wasn't that heavy no, when he was winning. He was around 130. Yeah. Magnus Samuelson maybe a bit heavier. He, he was, was heavy. Tall. He was very tall. Yeah, yeah, even though he was very slim. She's got her duck. <laughs> so if you hear quacking, that's her duck. Oh, dear me. Do you crickets? Thank you for the super chat. Lost predict. Devon versus Lovin. Paul versus Tyson. How will they flip the rock back to babyface? <laughs> right. Devon versus Lovin. Uh, I'd love to see Devon do it, but I think Lovin is just going to be a bit too strong. Okay. He is a beast. Paul Tyson. 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 I, God, I hope so. <laughs> I, I think everyone, well, most people want to see Tyson knock him out. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know Michael wants to see Tyson knock him out. And how will they flip the rock? I don't think you need to. I think the rock is a, um, a bad guy. It's great. Yeah, I like the rock as a heel. Yeah, yeah. he's just too good to be a baby face. Mm. What, was his, what, was he, what did he say the other day? Oh, I can't remember that, but was it Karen? Yeah. 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 I can't remember what he was saying, but yeah. Loss is very tickled showing me a video. Cousin Fred wants a DNA test on Mitch. <laughs> See what he's made of. <laughs> Michael, thank you for the super chat. Just finishing a nine-week program. When would be the best time to test one, Max, I'm guessing, for the next program? Uh, directly after competition or after a lengthy rest? Sorry, I was distracted by something So else. say what, someone's what, just finished a program yes. and they want to test out their new one rep max before they start a new program. Should they test it directly after competition or after a rest period? Yeah, like sometimes doing it after a competition is the best time too because you kind of have that week or two of like you don't need to be on plan. Once you're recovered from that competition, you can feel really fresh. I've, I've done competitions and then like a week later hit some huge numbers in the gym. Uh, before I've sort of got back on a plan to to focus on my next training block. Uh, obviously, you need to be recovered from the competition or the the, the max effort that you've done, but it, it's a perfect time to go for, for for some big lifts. A couple of people saying that they're a fan of the rule, um, like that it's not rushed. Uh, people talking about Mitch's home planet, Yuko Ahala. Uh, Gavin Bilton is the heaviest, isn't he? I believe so. Although I know Glenn Ross at one point in his career was heavier than Gav ever was, but I don't believe he was that heavy when he competed at Worlds. Mm. I think Gav could potentially be, although Grizzly, yeah, but Grizzly was short. Gav's much, much taller. Yeah. Um, because Grizzly was only about four hundred pounds, but he was okay. very short. <laughs> only. Um, Gav's very, very tall, and he, I think, he was up at like the four forty sort of mark, maybe slightly more. I think even 450, 460. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe Glenn's been as heavy as 500, but not while he was at World's Strongest Man. But right. Cleve Dean as well was pretty big. Cleve Dean was huge, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rasmus, thank you for the super chat. Could it be cool to see an event for reps where there's no max time limit, but there's a max time between reps? Mm -hmm. Ah, so there's like a max rest period but no overall max time limit god that could still go on a really mm. long time like for the clever I think, I, think strategic there, I think there needs to be a time limit an end point yeah because <laughs> i think if things do go on for too long like the, it, really. the thing with uh, lifting it before the time runs out you've only got that one attempt and if it goes down to the floor it's done <laughs> she's just pulled my sock off <laughs> <laughs> but um for me personally i i don't think i would want to see that but I'm sure there's people that would as well. Uh, Magnus Fair has said he was 120 to 125 when competing. So that would make him one yeah. of the lightest. Yeah. 
Uh, what did Matt you think? Rag for the first New Zealander on the, do you know what Matt is looking super strong cannot wait to see him at Worlds this year I think he's got a great chance of doing very very well yeah and like it really helps that he's so good at stones as well like getting your stones up now at World Strongest Man is so important isn't it in case you end up if in they're stone in a stone off. off yes yeah it's huge um what did you think about Mike Jenkins absolutely loved the guy one of the best people that I've ever met Mike Jenkins was unbelievably talented but a genuinely genuinely nice guy as well i don't have a single bad word to say about the man he was a superstar and you know hugely missed within the sport but just an incredible athlete just burst onto the scene he won the amateur arnolds then he came and won the main arnolds yeah. same year i competed at it and it was just a pleasure to watch him you know he was one of the best at moving events, unbelievable shoulder power. He was one of those guys that had one weakness, which was a deadlift. Mm. But, um, yeah, absolutely loved Mike. Um, people are saying Brian was, like, between 460 and 480, he said on a podcast. Brian never got weighed. He always refused to get weighed. He didn't want them knowing his, yeah. his real weight. But he said it since on a podcast that he weighed between 460 and 480. <laughs> Is Iron Bibby? Oh, why do you say it like that? Bibby? <laughs> Bigger than Gav. I'm glitching. Um, not Gav at his biggest, but Gav is a lot smaller now. Gav's lost a lot of weight. Uh, Iron Bibby, I'm not sure what he's weighing right now. But... Iron Bibby, when we saw him last in Glasgow, he was absolutely huge, wasn't he? Was. he? Like, really big. <laughs> Iron Bibby has, like, the biggest arms I've ever seen. Yeah. Like we may, they measured Bigger his than arms. my whole body. Yeah, <laughs> like, he, than any part he, of my body. Amazingly athletic for such a chunky man <laughs> yeah he can really move yeah i would love to see him like have a proper crack at world's strongest man i know he's got commitments and a lot of yeah. responsibility i think he, he i think he's focusing on the deadlift yeah he he's well he said didn't he after the log now he wants to concentrate on the deadlift and i was like oh because i never thought of him as a deadlifter i was like what's yeah. your max pb right now because you've never trained for it for a comp have you and he said no never um but i've pulled 440 and i was like oh okay <laughs> Darren's had a never one world's strongest man, and I think that was the question, wasn't it? Who, the lightest winner of world's strongest man, or um, talking yeah. just smallest to compete there, because there's been even smaller than than Darren that's competed. Stumpy. He was yeah, very short, but yeah. um, that's range. height. Whereas he was still pretty chunky. Yeah. And then we've got like the different weight classes. I mean, there's some amazing athletes in some of the weight classes. But if we're talking winners of world's strongest man, it's a little bit different. What's Hooper's biggest weakness? Um. I would have said last year grip, but his grip we've worked really, really hard on. Um, he still needs to get better in terms of like tricep strength, um, just like pure shoulder and tricep strength still needs to improve. Um, but it's not bad by any means. But in terms of, you know, if, if, if there was a strict press for Max at World's Strongest Man, mm. he wouldn't be the best by any means. No. Um, but luckily that's not. What, what strong man, man is. is no. uh, we spent the winter this year really trying to put some muscle onto his upper body, which has been beneficial. And then obviously he's worked towards, you know, Arnold's and Worlds are his main focuses this year. They are without question the big goals. After that, training is less important. He's still going to train. He's someone that trains hard all the time, but he's got a lot of commitments and he'll focus more on, you know, promoting himself and, and he'll still compete, but without the same sort of laser focus that it is for, for worlds and for the arnolds but he, he is coming into worlds in shape I, I i truly believe he's the favorite for world's strongest man this year mm. i think i think tom is the only person that could stop him this year mm. but i don't think many people have a chance against him if he, <laughs> if he if he turns up in the shape that i think he can and he performs i think he's like 70 percent favorite to win It'll take a, a hell of a performance to be him. There you go. Um, I think someone's trying to link the Brian podcast. Unfortunately, if that is what you're doing, I don't think links show on here unless you're a moderator. I think um, links aren't allowed on the chat to stop spamming and stuff. All those pesky sex bots. <laughs> Cousin Fred, thank you for the super chat. Loz, how many sticks have you broken? And check out the pic on my... On your what? <laughs> it's on Insta your chat. Instagram. There you Instagram. Go. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, do you know what? I've never broken a stick. No, it's the stick. one and only. This is the one and only stick. Yeah. Maybe we should auction it for charity at some point. Although, no, we did it's say we're going to. It's your stick. We're collecting strongman memorabilia. I haven't seen it we? for. I, I don't know where it 
it was. It was but just it a bag somewhere. It was in an old bag. How <laughs> dare you just chuck it in a bag somewhere? <laughs> The stick. <laughs> Not respecting the I'm stick. I'm almost like ready to compete again. I just hold. Now he's got. Feel, I can feel the power coming back to me. Coming out now of your that the stick. stick is here. This is like where all my power came from. Was it? Although one year <laughs> I just used a strap where yourself. I didn't have the stick. Yeah, and you did well. Then, Jack as well. put in that video. Yeah, he did. Jack did. Yeah. Jack knows the good content. Yeah, he, knows he knows where to find the good he knows. stuff. Rano's birthday party and you compete with <laughs> the strap. <laughs> Rano got some good time in that video. He did. Yeah. He did. He got good airtime. Oh, Jack. If you are still here, please give us a Rauno meme experience. There is so much potential content. You can use as much of our content as you <laughs> like. I so I will not um, come for you. <laughs> but um, we need that. That would be delightful. <laughs> He's very memeable, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. Yes, he is. <laughs> 2003 World Trucks Man um, Pujanovsky won the title before the last event. I think Hooper will do the same this year. He's got a chance. I think... I think it's going to be Tom and Mitch. Like, I think I don't think they'll be that far away from each other, but I think no. they'll be quite far away from everyone else. I, I agree. Like, I think I think Tom and... really suits World's Strongest Man. Mm -hmm. I mean, four years in a row he's been top two, so you cannot count him out at Worlds. Never, especially having a banker last event yes. every time. Yeah, like, like he could be third in his group and still qualify, oh, he, yeah. and he knows yeah. that. So he can kind of almost coast the the heats. And there's there's going to be good events for him in the final. Mm. He's just too good not to. And I think um, Mitch is just too good at everything now. You can't, like, when I say too good at everything, you just can't chuck an event at Mitch that you think, oh, he's going to come 10th on that or 8th. No. It's hard to ever see him outside the top four on any event, well, unless he makes a mistake, which is always possible. It's a strongman competition. It's a sport at the end of the day. But he's one of those athletes that just seems to be really reliable when he has to do something. Yeah, although last year he did have a fifth place finish in the Fingal's Finger. Yeah, I know, but it was the which, second time he'd ever done Fingal's Yeah, play. but that's what I mean, and he still won. But there's no Fingal's Fingers in this year, which no. you know. Yeah, <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> but <laughs> what I mean is, even when he did have bigger weaknesses, he was still capable of winning. Yes, yeah. I was trying I, to I, I, I can't see him coming outside the top four on any event in the final. Potentially not outside the top three on any event in the final. Mm. And he'll have events that I believe he can win in the final as well. Yeah. So it makes him very hard to beat. Tom has events that he can 100% win. Um, we know how good Tom is at certain events. Then it depends on who gets between them. Yes. And that is going to be the real key factor. Because there's great athletes that are really good at certain events. Yeah. And it's where are those two's weaknesses against each other. Yeah. Because that's going to be the, the yeah. deciding factor. Yeah. Who do, like who do the events favour more mm. because they both got banker events, haven't they? Ah, dear. Thank you to whoever gifted me a membership. I'm working out, so I'm not watching as much as usual. Uh, you can enjoy um, later, Julian. There's uh, plenty of members only. Oh, I didn't now. know this. There's a new season of Physical 100. I enjoyed that. Oh, 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 no, we're not going to get anything done. And we we've got will a have very to watch that. busy week. Yeah, so we've got too much to do this week, but I will get that on at some point. Yes, we're working on our next biography video. We've got um, going to be quite a bit of news coming out this week as well, isn't there, in the world of strongman? What else is happening? That's it. <laughs> feels like a lot because the kids are on school holidays so it feels a bit more daunting than normal but never mind we will definitely less catch time that to get things done yes no fingers fingers what are we going to laugh at liz for saying wrong then oh god can you remember like if you've just become a member you have to go and check out last year there was a members only videos of all of our bloopers from the meet the athlete series i could not say fingers fingers for the life of me it's coming out fingers fingers <laughs> to the point where I could have cried. <laughs> Absolute nightmare. Right, let's wrap up. Alejandro, thank you for the super chat. Instead of loading Atlas Stones, how about loading Odd Stones? Make it more exciting and not such a bank. This is an event anyone. that's been done before, yeah. like natural stone loading. And it, it's 2013 good... they last had it at Worlds? Yeah, and it's been done at, it's been done at, you know, comps many times. Mm. It, it's definitely fun. I like kind of the odd stones. I love a natural stone run. Yeah, I think Fortissimus when they did the um, the the tombstone is that last stone is yeah. that kind of famous picture of Poundstone loading it. Yeah, that was really cool. So yeah, I, I'd be well up for seeing that. Yeah, we'd love to see it. Um, people talking about physical one hundred with OSG now inviting the whole podium for 
last couple of years to World's Strongest Man. Why don't they publicly say it's a World's Strongest Man qualifier? I really don't know. Like, I was I was talking to Dan Hipkiss about this today. I know. Me and Dan <laughs> kind of both feel that should be that that should be the qualifier to get to the Giants live shows. Mm-hmm. The fact that the top three for the last few years have qualified straight to Worlds, and then certain athletes aren't getting to Worlds, I can see why it upsets people. I can too, because not everyone can afford to go to OSG because you know that you have to pay to be there. There is a like a sign up fee, but if you're coming from like Australia, <laughs> anywhere in Europe, it, it costs a few grand to go there for the week, and you know your hotel costs, your food, and everything. So it does make it hard for people that just aren't in a financial position to do that. But I think at the end of the day, it really pushes that route to say, this is the way in. And I think they're not saying it because it's not actually the case. It's not officially a qualifier for Worlds. It's only a qualifier for Giants. But I think they've been able to make an argument for the guys these last few years, which is why they've ended up at Worlds. Yeah. Yeah, it is interesting how that's come about because not even being like not even the winner was guaranteed a world's invite still just a giant live mm. invitation wasn't it yeah. but now all three it, are going it almost seems like it should just say oh it's going to be a qualified for worlds yeah <laughs> yeah jack pgm's moment of you calling <laughs> an innocent asian woman a sex that was my favorite moment. you met her anyway, didn't you i met her i met her <laughs> at the arnold uk but um it was the most inconvenient time because i was carrying a large box of bloody lift heavy be kind hoodies out back and she was like Liz I was the Asian sex beauty bot thing I was like oh my god it's so nice to meet you I'm so sorry I can't stop carrying this heavy box I was worried if I put it back down it wouldn't come up again (laughs) but yeah it's just like me isn't it you know you guys you come here for the strongman content and to be insulted clearly (laughs) Someone oh, asking dear. me what my best raw lifts are on squat bench and deadlift. Um, my best squat in the gym. I I never really pushed a max squat. Uh, it was always more rep work that I focused on. I've squatted three eighty for three, and um, I've done two hundred and fifty two and a half kilos for twenty on a safety bar, uh, just in belt and knee wraps. Uh, bench press two thirty was never a huge bench presser. Uh, deadlift. Most of the deadlift was in competition, which is uh, 435 kilos. In the gym, I've done 420. So they are my best numbers. I want to rail Loz. Does that mean what I think it means? I don't know. Mm. I'm old and don't understand the lingo. Right, let's end here. What do you think of Lucas Hatton after the Arnold GK? Lucas was absolutely brilliant. A lot of time for him. Very, very impressed with what he um, brought in terms of a package to the contest. Um, Very, very strong. Nice dude. Would love to see him get more big um, opportunities because he is clearly very, very strong. I feel, personally, right now, he is the strongest person that has not been invited yet to the world's strongest man this year. And I would love to see him there. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. Oh, can't end there because... Jiminy Crickets has swooped in. Thank you so much for the super chat. Bye, Holly. A chew toy with this. Good night. Thank you, buddy. She's asleep now. She has calmed down. <laughs> yes. Oh, look at her. She's all cute now. Asleep. Yeah, she's adorable. She yes. blends in with the rug. <laughs> right. What's this? Oh, oh, oh. By very popular demand, Rauno Hainler, a meme experience is definitely on the list. Yes, I cannot wait. Oh, that's going to be very exciting. There you go. Oh, what a there high to end this night on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was lots great. of fun, guys. Enjoy chatting to you all tonight. Hope you have uh, enjoy the rest of your Easter. Um, have a great week, and we'll catch you guys next week. Yep, awesome. Okay, take care, everyone. Bye. Smile and wave, Lizzie. Kiss my.